The state of the uh, Cypriot economy right now, how would you characterize things? Well, it's quite good, actually. We have been through difficulties in the last few years, but um, uh, the Cyprus economy has achieved a remarkable re recovery. We're growing with, with a rate of 3% of the GDP, and we operate with a balanced budget for the last few years. So uh, things have... Uh, uh, have improved significantly. The banking sector also has healed to a significant extent. So uh, we are on a good path. What would you characterize as the key drivers of that? Because obviously there are other Eurozone countries that continue to uh, perform uh, quite poorly economically after their bailout. So what, what's made it work for Cyprus? Well, I, I would mention a couple of issues. First of all, we have uh, some strong, promising sectors like tourism and uh, shipping uh, and business services, who, which have performed strongly. Uh, but we also were also very determined and very focused in uh, establishing and maintaining a pro-business economic environment. We have not been raising taxes. We have been, uh, we have been lowering taxes and offering incentives to, to business and investment. And this has worked and it, and it has delivered um, uh, this uh, strong rebound of the economy. Let's talk about one sector in Cyprus, which is energy, and there are, there's ongoing business for natural gas resources in the countries. What can you tell us about the latest round of bidding? Look, we've just concluded indeed the third licensing round in Cyprus and we have managed to attract uh, some of the biggest names of the industry. Uh, namely, we have been able to award a block to Exxon together with Qatar Petroleum, ENI from Italy and uh, Total from France. And this goes very far to show the potential of uh, the Cyprus exclusive economic zone, not only uh, with regards to our waters, but um, overall in general, I would dare say, the Eastern Mediterranean, which is uh, fast becoming an alternative source of supply for the European Union. And just to give you a number to put that into perspective, uh, so far in the Eastern Met, we have had about 2,000 billion cubic meters of discoveries. The EU in 2015 consumed about 413 uh, BCM. So you can see that while we have just started with the discoveries, the Eastern Med could soon become an alternative source of supply and routes, I dare say, uh, to the European Union. Uh, one potential source of anxiety for anyone uh, thinking of investing in Cyprus is the ongoing, the failed peace talks or the stalled peace talks. Uh, how is that affecting business? The fact that there was hope on peace talks going into this year, they've since stalled. Where do things stand now and do you see an economic impact from that? Yeah, look, if it were to happen, if we were able to find a solution and to re reunify Cyprus, obviously uh, this would offer um, a huge boost to economic activity and to investment. But um, uh, uh, the record shows uh, that um, uh, uh, finding good investment opportunities and uh, uh, ensuring uh, an economy which, which is functioning and performing strongly is not dependent upon a reunification. So uh, uh, e even though it's, um, we are still um, uh, engaged in an effort to, 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 to achieve uh, a solution, uh, uh, we're not reliant upon it. We have shown that the economy can uh, uh, achieve very satisfactory, very good growth rates even without a solution. And that's, uh, uh, that's, the, main, the, uh, that's the main scenario, the, that's the main working scenario, that we shall not have a solution. If it comes, it will be an over and above uh, Boost. And do you see any direct impact on uh, the energy bidding or the energy sector from the status of the peace talks? I have to say that uh, so far, as my colleague has just mentioned, we have progressed right quite well in everything that we do, whether it's for the first or second licensing round, indeed now the third, uh, where it, that, whether it is for the discoveries that we already have in Cyprus by American companies, by the way, Noble, uh, to, be more, uh, to be more exact. So we will continue down that path, while at the same time we will continue to seek regional alliances uh, so that we can create the stable, predictable investment environment needed uh, for the offshore activities in the oil and gas industry. Uh, I want to turn the attention to politics because, of course, that's dominating everything on, uh, in the U.S. and in Europe. First of all, Brexit. Uh, 
The vote for the UK to leave the Eurozone has prompted a lot of companies to look for alternate places within the EU to set up business, whether it's especially our financial companies. You talked about uh, the success of Cyprus being owed in part to a pro-business stance. Do you see an opportunity for Cyprus to have businesses re relocate there from the UK? Yeah, I, I don't want to use the word opportunity when it comes to um, a very negative um, decision yeah. of, of, for the EU, one which we fully respect, of course, but I consider it as, uh, a, as a negative um, development. So um, I wouldn't like to use the word which has a positive connotation. That said, and the respective of um, the decision of the, of, of the British people which we respect, yes, we shall continue to uh, work and to strive in order to improve the, comp the competitiveness and the attractiveness of, of, of Cyprus. We are an excellent destination to do business, to set up a base um, uh, and to invest. Uh, so the advantages are obviously there. Yeah, and, and just to complement uh, what was mentioned, it's not like we are positioning Cyprus as an alternative to you, the UK, um, um, rather than as a complement to the UK. So mm. now that UK businesses will be looking for an EU base as well, Cyprus right. is the ideal location. And I have to be frank, we are working very closely uh, with the British government exactly uh, to promote that positioning for Cyprus because uh, we have very, very many similarities, whether it's the law, common law, or other kind of... Um, uh, um, framework regimes. And have you seen businesses, whether they're hedge funds, brokers, anything like that, talk to you specifically about the opportunity to set up, as you put it, a complement to their UK operations? Well, all the time, but I wouldn't relate it especially to Brexit. We are in continuous contact with, uh, uh, with foreign business across the sectors. There is, there is strong interest and uh, we are seeing um, um, uh, companies setting up a base in Cyprus all the time. Um, uh, and obviously this, this is a, a process which we shall continue supporting with uh, pro-business policies and the incentives and keeping macroeconomic and political stability. Bigger picture, uh, beyond Brexit, that's not the only country in the EU, EU where there's, there appears to be some sort of rising anti-EU tide, although mm -hmm. perhaps that's a bit overstated. But from your perspective, how, uh, how should the uh, leaders of EU countries deal with this sort of ongoing threat to their legitimacy, the loss of confidence that people have, and the appeal of parties and politicians who want to roll back the project in some way. Yeah, I, I would take the popular feelings very seriously and my recommendation would be that we uh, that we'd prob we probably take a pause and reflect and consider very carefully any any further steps in the direction of European integration, especially on, on, on European economic policy, staying away from unnecessary regulation and uh, rules which do not add but rather burden the uh, the competitiveness of uh, of the european economies um, and take only those steps which will enhance uh, the productive capacity of our economies doing less probably but doing it better would be my recommendation there's been you know for years there's been talk about further integration of the eurozone countries on the fiscal front as a way to prevent the sort of two-speed europe where some countries are thriving and some countries on the periphery are plodding along is that something that you think should be on the roadmap I would be very cautious. Um, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, come a long way, uh, but we should ensure that any further steps are well thought and uh, um, always uh, uh, carry with them uh, the popular will. Um, uh, it's no good making steps, uh, ignoring uh, the feelings and the views of our people. We need to re-establish political leg legitimacy and democratic legitimacy and that we cannot achieve by, by making leaps um, which uh, go in the face of uh, popular opinion. So I would be hesitant, I would be cautious and I would take uh, careful steps, well thought steps which enjoy broad support. And how closely do you, are you paying attention to say the uh, beginning of the French election in April? Well obviously um, no, um, France is, um, is a European leader uh, and um, we shall be um, closely watching what, what comes out from the election uh, and I do hope that the outcome uh, will be one which will 
enable France, but also Europe, to uh, continue making positive steps.